Hey, this is Kaz, and this is Nightmares at Midnight. Hi everybody and welcome back. It's just me today and as well would say Patricia who's here <laughs> in my brain with me. Today we are finishing the Sea Creatures series. We did a few of them. Hopefully you've listened to them at this point. We are finishing it up with the Capricorn since we just came out of the Capricorn days. Um, we'll talk about all of that too. Uh, before we jump into it, I just want to tell you how things are going here in Alaska. It is freezing. We had a blizzard yesterday, and it is icy and cold, and just like it, Alaska is expected to be, I guess. So I'll give you my quick spiel, and we'll jump into it. So you're probably listening on Spotify or our website. Those are the two top places people listen. Other spots you can listen if you'd like is Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, Podcast Index, TuneIn Plus Alexa, Podcast Attic, iHeartRadio, and we do have two new spots that we are available at Podchaser and a spot called Deezer, which is D-E-E-Z-E-R if you listen to that. Then you can also follow us on Instagram at Nightmares at Midnight Podcast. You can check us out on Facebook, Nightmares at Midnight Podcast. Like I normally tell you, I go on there during the week and I post pictures about what we're going to be doing the following episode, kind of maybe leave it suspicious as to which one we're doing, have you guys guess. The most important thing I want to tell you today on this episode is to jump over to patreon.com. So when you go to Patreon, you can support our podcast by joining one of the groups and you get special stuff. Like you get to watch me record the podcast you get one-on-one time with me. You get special stuff, like we're working into merchandise right now. So jump over there, patreon.com slash Nightmares at Midnight podcast, and join one of the groups. So that way you can support our podcast and spread the word a little bit more. Also, if you'd like to check out our website, which has been here the whole time, is Nightmares at Midnight podcast dot buzzsprout dot com. As a busy mom, it can be hard to take care of yourself. My friend Jennifer has opportunities to solve just that. She now has a brand new storefront. Her anchored in relaxation storefront is here in Wasilla, Alaska at 3400 East Cottle Loop. It's in the new building on the corner of Seward Meridian and Palmer Wasilla Highway. Her place is a great relaxing spot to get a facial and a massage all in one location. You can find her on Facebook, Square Appointments, and by emailing anchoredinrelaxation at gmail.com. Mention you heard about her on my podcast and get a free peppermint scalp massage added on to any massage. Support your local veteran-owned businesses and go to Anchored in Relaxation today. Okay, I went through the spiel. I know some of you probably forwarded through that at this point. Those of you that listen every time, thank you for tuning in again. Okay, so the Capricorn is what we're doing today. It's a sea goat. So the goat is traditionally called the Capricornus. The word Capricornus comes from Latin. So loosely translated, it means a horned goat or goat horn or having horns like goats. And it refers to the constellation and the zodiac sign. So when I mentioned earlier about astrology, we were just coming out of the Capricorn, which the time frame there is December 21st, 22nd, kind of changes in there. That's kind of the cusp of it. And then in between January 19th, 20th, 21st, that's kind of the end of the cusp there for it. Capricorns have the face and upper body of a goat, and the tail of a fish, making it capable of swimming and laying out on shores. Despite it 
anatomically making no sense whatsoever. These creatures were capable of speech somehow. I don't get it. The sea goat is a creature from myth and legend. It is described as, like I said, having the head of a goat but the tail of a fish. And the horned goat has appeared in the mythology of many cultures throughout the years. Most notably in ancient Greek, Latin, Egyptian, and other Eastern myths. So, as you can tell, I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing most of this because it's Greek and Latin and Egyptian. Bear with me when I try to pronounce different things. Unlike some other seafaring creatures from myth and legend, the sea goat lives more as a metaphorical entity rather than being involved in many historical encounters. I actually, when I was researching this, could not find any sightings of this. So it is definitely in the metaphorical side of things. It is clear from the start that this being does not exist, but represents an idea. Some scholars believe there might be some similarities with, and indeed might well have originated, from the Assyro-Babylonian depictions of their god of wisdom. And I think it's pronounced Oenes? I, I don't know for sure. He was said to have taught mankind the importance of writing, the arts, and the sciences. Unlike Capricornus, who had the body of a fish and the head of a goat, Oenus had the form of a fish, but with the head of a man under his fish's head and his fish's tail, the feet of a man. So it's like a fish back and tail and head and then just smash the body of a man underneath it. I've seen pictures. It's weird, but it's a little bit different than the Capricornus with the goat part. Whether the connection between Oenus and Capricornus is legitimate or not, we know for sure that a connection wasn't made to the stars until the ancient Greeks came along. So the Greeks were very keen on the pastime of naming a star, and not just a singular star, but the multitude of stars that became the constellations. Though the constellations were never just formed, there's always a tale to go along as well. In Greek mythology, the sea goat appears in many forms. There are varying interpretations of the myth within ancient Greek lore, and the majority of these relate to the constellation Capricornus. Like I said, Capricornus was seen as a sea goat. One of these tales is that Amalthea, the foster mother goat of Zeus, was sent to live in the sky among the stars as a reward for raising him from a child. So that's one version. The next is, I think it's Prychus, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Prychus was one of the most significant sea goats in Greek mythology. It is said that Prychus was the head of a race of sea goats and was considered their, quote, father. Kronos, which is a pretty popular Greek name here, was the creator of Prychus and the group of half goat, half fish creatures. He gave them human-like abilities to communicate and conjure thoughts. However, their nature was to be on land, and after many failed attempts to prevent his race from existing on land, Prychus was the only sea goat left in the water. This situation made him plead with Kronos to end his life. However, Kronos let him live in the stars instead. Then, there's the Greek god Pan. Pan was also considered to be a sea goat, and was known as the god of the wilderness. In a classic tale of the battle between Zeus and Typhon, Zeus attempts to escape into the river. To do this, he tries to turn into a fish, but not succeeding, he became half fish. After being forced into confrontation, Zeus is victorious but loses his leg muscles. Pan helps him alongside Hermes to restore his full body and is consequently sent to live in the stars as a reward for his help. I don't know if that's a reward, really. I mean, I guess in that version it seems to try to be. The notion of the sea goat appears again in the form of Aegipan. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one either. If you're listening and you know how to pronounce Greek names, please shout out because I would love to hear how to pronounce these correctly a mythological being that was similar in stature to Pan. Aegipan was said to be the son of Zeus. He had the typical features of the sea goat, a bottom half of a fish, along with the top half of a goat. 
In ancient Mesopotamia, Capricornus was referred to as Suhermus, which translate as goat fish. The ancient Sumerian god Enki is often intertwined with Capricornus as Enki symbolized flowing water, the goat, and a bird. So looking at religions, I'm only going to briefly touch, we're not going to get deep into that this time. The sea goat appears in Judaic history through storytelling. In a traditional Jewish tale, the Leviathan demands that all sea creatures must be offered to it. Creatures had to travel far and wide to do this, with the sea goat being one of them. As far as astrology, the image of the constellation of Capricorn is of a sea goat. The Capricorn sign of the zodiac follows in the same image portraying that of a goat and fish combined. Many of the origin stories of how the constellation of Capricorn formed is largely tied to the gods. And as we mentioned, they kind of seem to be sent to the sky by Zeus. Anyway, the star systems Beta Capricorni and Delta Capricorni situated 329 and 38 light years from the Earth respectively reside within the constellation of Capricorn. These systems include many bright stars such as Dubai. That's one of the stars' names. So uh, while I was researching, I came across a kid's book that has the Greek kind of stories in it. And I took note of it. I'm going to read a little blip of it. I just, I think it's interesting to read how the book was portrayed as once upon a time in the ancient lands of Greece, long before goats roamed the Grecian hills and grazed on their sweet grasses, there lived the great Prychus, the sea goat. Prychus had many children. After many years of teaching and taking care of his fellow sea goats, none would come to act on their curiosity quite like the sea goat triplets, Am, Al, and Thea. The three of them were always getting into the most trouble, clogging up sea pipes with their swift tails and waking up the ocean's animal kingdom with their loud, clambering hooves. Am, Al, and Thea loved their feet and could move together in harmony. The three of them went everywhere along. Not only were they a sight to see, but they were also quite a song to hear. Now, Prychus was created by the Greek god of time, Kronos, who needed a magnificent creature to help him on his journey with the high clock. Once Prychus was born, Kronos made him immortal so that the goat could live forever. Forever he lived among his children in the vast Mediterranean Sea and oceans beyond it. Sea goats were fascinating creatures that loved the deep waters. They could swim freely and even practice their clomping and stomping on the rocks underwater. You see, sea goats were unique creatures. At the front, they looked like goats as we know them, but at the back, they looked like fish. Beyond having had so many children, of which he rarely saw anyone that often, Prychus was kept busy with telling stories, teaching history, and helping those in need. Being honorable as this half-goat, half-fish creature was, Prychus made sure to educate all his children about the importance of cooperation with all other living things in the ocean. News around the ocean's animal kingdom and amongst many of his sea-goat children had spread quickly about Am, Al, and Thea. Father of all sea goats, Prychus grew to know his set of playful sea goat triplets. Their songs p- sounded so lovely underwater and began to attract all of Prychus's children. Along with them and some other sea creatures, he followed their songs to where the triplets spent most of their time together, splashing in coordination in the shallower parts of the seafloor. On an unusually cloudy day, Am, Al, and Thea were playing in a small coral reef. As the sun shone through a small opening in the clouds, its rays caught the glimmer of a small piece of coral floating towards shore. The triplets saw this and in agreement, half swam, half galloped to follow it. Just as the triplets were approaching the shore, Prychus and others began arriving. Am, Al, and Thea followed the rhythm of each other's hooves and started to pull themselves out of the water. Clap, 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 clap. The other seagoat children heard these sounds, and by now the sun was shining exceptionally bright. 
Prychus and the rest of his children could see the triplets begin to bask in the sun's glorious rays, moving their hooves back and forth to a particular beat. The other sea goats saw this and half swam, half trotted to shore too. From memory, they followed the triplets' rhythm. Clap, 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 clap. As Prychus could tell, the longer his sea goat children sat on the rocky shore, the stranger their magnificent fishtails began to look. Mirroring their front legs, many of the sea goats were now growing new back legs with hooves on them. Prychus was devastated as he could foresee all his children losing their beautiful tails that helped them swim the ocean deep. So he searched his brain and remembered a long and complicated ability Kronos had given him at birth, the ability to reverse time. Prychus moved aside and waited as time began to shift. His children turned back into sea goats, the clouds came out again, and the triplets went back to making their song in the ocean. None of the other creatures of the sea remembered a thing. Prychus, with his great abilities, was the only sea goat to commemorate the event. However, time passed, and Prychus stumbled upon the triplets, each with four hooves, once more. They were clamoring their new songs on land, attracting all his sea goat children to follow in their hoof steps. Again, Prychus used his ability to reverse time. Prychus spent ages reversing time and living through countless scenes of the triplets and the rest of his sea goat children clamoring to shore in their unique harmony. He loved their new sound on land, but it was a different melody. It was flashier and more precise than when heard in the water, but their sound echoed less on earth. Filled with sadness, Prychus' steadfast hope to have his children back with him grew to patience for himself. He slowly understood Cronus' journey with the great clock, as he saw his children on shore running around, clopping and clamping. Am, Al, and Thea were already scaling hills and rocky mounds with ease. Their playful harmony was beautiful. Prychus stopped reversing time. He stayed near the shallow waters of the Grecian shores until he no longer could see his children running in circles or chasing each other's hoof prints in the sand. They had all moved to higher ground. As they walked away, Prychus filled with a sense of immense sadness. He rarely visited Kronos in the flesh, but due to his grief, Prychus met with him. He asked him to turn him into a mortal to live out the rest of his days near the shore in mourning. I cannot bear a life away from my children's songs, Prychus said. Kronos had been observing. His sympathy for Prychus was great, but his love for Prychus' abilities to teach and guide others was just as great. So, Cronus refused Prychus' request. Instead, he granted him a great gift of even greater permanent status. Prychus became the stars in the sky. The constellation Capricorn is where Prychus is now. He glimmers through the night sky, through the clouds, gazing at his children on their higher ground and listening to their sweet sounds of melody. So I think that's beautiful. I like that version a lot. That makes it broken down a little bit to understand the sky and stars part of it. In the world of science, there are some interesting facts. Capricornus is the 40th biggest constellation in the sky, and it lies in the fourth quadrant of the southern hemisphere. So those of you that are into astrology, I, I think it is really interesting to be able to point out the same star several times. I am not capable of doing that. I think the only thing that I've been able to ever find is like the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper or Orion's Belt, maybe. But other than that, I'm not real good at that part of it. Because I always look up alcohol, or when Will's here, he does too. There's actually a Capricorn distilling company in Queensland. So I looked through what they sell, and they have limited release Christmas gin called Three Wise Goats. I thought that one was funny. They have a Capricorn Pure Single Rum, also limited release, a coffee rum, summer gin, Capricorn rum, and soda with grapefruit or ginger and lime. They have a Capricorn Oak Aged Gin, and they do have hoodies like long sleeves, t-shirts if you don't drink. Their logo is the goat with kind of a water-looking background behind it. It's interesting because it does have legs in the logo. It's not the goat and fish part. I also found a website that listed a different cocktail for each zodiac sign. I did include the link to the distillery and this website. 
in the show notes so you can check these out if you're interested. Uh, Capricorns was cranberry thyme syrup, vodka, lemonade, and club soda, and then topped with cranberries and thyme sprigs. As far as media and books, there's a ton of stuff because of the astrology. There's not nearly as much with the fish goat type deal, but there is a lot with the astrology on it. If you are wanting the mythical creature we are talking about, then you need to add sea goat into your search or something of the sort, or you're going to get all sorts of the astrology star stuff instead, zodiac stuff instead. And although that is interesting, that's not quite what we're referencing here. So books, the same thing. Uh, You need to add the sea goat or you'll get astrology books and sign stories and such like that. I did find in the musical side of things that there is a place called the Museum at Capricorn and it interprets the history and impact of Capricorn Records and Capricorn Sound Studios in the context of Macon, Georgia's rich music heritage. More than 1,200 square feet of artifacts, murals, and interactive digital kiosks featuring music, video, and text bring the Capricorn story of life. I checked this out visually, and there's actually a pretty cool musical display that you can interact with. I don't know. If I ever make it to Georgia, I'll probably check it out. So this is a shorter episode. It's not your typical 50-minute long ones that we've been doing. It's a little bit harder for me now that I've had Will and Violet on here with me to make them that long because we're not doing the playful banter that you guys love so much. That's all I have on the Capricorn Next week, there's a special surprise episode coming. Then we will be working on another episode to finish up the end of the season. Uh, Like we've said before, we're going to do 23 episodes and then uh, we'll take a brief break and then move on to season two. Hopefully, at the end of the season, we can start spreading the word a little bit more so that way the word can get out a little bit. I'm looking into some podcast events so that way I can get the name out there as well. Um, We also are updating our ads. As you've noticed in this one, the ad has changed from what it was before. So definitely check that out. But yeah, hope everyone's having a good day. And as always... Catch us next time.